Hey guys, so my mom's car's Volkswagen Jetta whole driver door electronics stopped working. And a bunch of warning lights came up on the dashboard. So today we are going to diagnose and fix the problem that occurred. So first of all, let's connect my OBD11 diagnostic tool and scan the car for problems. We have this car for 10 years now, and I guess it never was connected to a diagnostic tool. As you can see it has 37 problems found. Let's autocode the gateway. Now, let's see what problems it found that are connected to the problem that occurred. Here's one, driver side door module, no signal or communication. Here's another one, side airbag crash sensor driver side, implausible signal. Here's the third, same as the first one. Here's one more. And one more. Here's a bunch that basically says that none of the speaker of the driver side door are working. So, we know the problems now to verify them, let's clear the codes and then rescan the car. As you can see, a lot of the problems went away just by clearing the codes but six of them left, let's check them out. So the driver side door control module problem is left. The speaker problem still exists. After clearing the problems let's check if any warning lights are left. As you can see, all that it says that some LEDs are burnt in the tail lights and the ESP warning is light up but that just will go away after a while. So, the first thing to check is always the fuses. No matter what, you would be surprised how many problems get fixed just by replacing a fuse. To check if a fuse is good, you will need a multimeter. Set it to ohms. Fuses have cut out slots, so you could check if they're good. So touch those slots with multimeter contacts. And then check what multimeter shows. If it is showing numbers, then the fuse is okay, but if it's showing a wealth, the fuse is bad. So I found this 5 amp fuse, but as you can see, the multimeter is showing that it's okay, but if you check closer, you can see that it is burned. Looking inside of it, you can see that one side is touching the other side, so the multimeter wasn't wrong, just the current that goes through it is not enough to power the blower motor. This is a fuse for the blower motor, my mom said that it stopped working a while ago. So replacing the fuse fixes that problem. The most common problem that makes the whole door electronics to fail is the wires in between the door and the car itself. As you can see here, I found that four wires were broken. I will have to fix that. So, we will have to remove this rubber firstly and then disconnect the plug. To remove the connector, you will have to unlock the security key that holds the connector in place. Once it popped, just pull it down a little more and then remove the connector itself. Give it a wiggle, and off it goes. 
to fix these wires, I will be removing the wires from the connector. To do that, I will have to remove the security key that holds them in place, which is this purple plastic thing all across the connector. To remove it, you have to push it from the bottom and at the same time press on here on both sides, or else it won't come out. And to remove the wire, you'll need a special key that fits in these two holes. And then you will have to pull the wire from the other side and it will just come out. You can buy these special keys on AliExpress or eBay. As you can see here, I am inserting the key and pulling the wire from the other side. Now, as I have way more space to work with it, I am going to make it a bit longer. I am connecting two wires with each other with these amazing connectors. They solder the wires together and even waterproofs them. You just have to heat them with a hot air blower or a lighter. Look how nice and easy it is. To connect it back to the connector, just push it into the connector until it clicks. Now, repeat the process for the rest of the wires. Now, the next problem is that the wires are really short, so I had to remove the door panel and push the wire further to have more space to work with them. But the wires were still stuck somewhere inside, so I cut a hole in the door with angle grinder to see what it is that holds it. And the thing that held it in place was a zip tie. So I cut it to be able to pull the wires. Now I have enough space to work with. To start working, we will have to remove the protecting coating like 5 cm of it to have plenty of space. While I did all this work for those four wires, I might also check and fix other wires that have insulation cracked and broken. I found a few cracked wires, so I am going to fix it and show you a few different methods to do that. The first one is to use those magic connectors. The second one is to use heat shrink tubing over the wire. But you will have to remove the wire from connector for this one. And the last one is to use insulating tape over the cracked wires, so they won't touch other wires and cause a fire. If you are using insulating tape, I recommend applying heat to the tape, so it shrinks and sticks better. After fixing and connecting the rest wires, it's time to insulate them all as we removed some of the material to get access to them. We have to slide the rubber protection all the way down as low as we can, to protect as much of the wires as we can. So let's apply insulating tape as far as we can. Now, what's left is to put everything back together, where it belongs and check if everything works. 
So, I checked, everything works, the mirrors, speakers, windows, everything work, but unfortunately, I forgot to film it. And the last step is to connect the car to the diagnostic tool and remove the problems that came earlier and rescan the car. Now let's scan the car after clearing the codes. As you can see for yourself, no more door module, speaker and airbag codes. That means it all works now. Hope you like this video, more important it helps you. Thank you for watching.